Welcome to the Better Together podcast. Today we're going to talk about the wildfires that are out on the West Coast, especially in California and Oregon. We have Terry Mott and uh, Mike Kilcrease. They're the promotional directors there for the Northwest. Terry is and Mike for the state of California. So I asked them just to come on with us today. Uh, It's Wednesday, September the 16th. And so we want to really give folks a real time information about what our end of our people are facing and so that they could better pray for them and better support them. And so uh, Mike and Terry, it's, it's really been a rough time out there on the West coast for, for quite a while, hasn't it? Well, it has been. Um, I've never seen anything like this uh, since I've been in Oregon and, and I've been here 32 years. And some of the old timers that have been here a lot longer, they're, they're telling me the same thing. Mm. Wow. So yeah. when we think about Oregon, you know, we think about uh, the end of the, the trail, which we have churches right there at the end and uh, how beautiful it is. And a lot of that landscape has changed, hasn't it? Well, it, it has in Oregon. Um, and I know Mike will address that, uh, what's happening in California. But, but yes, um, you know, Oregon has a unique uh, beauty about it. And everyone that has ever come from back east out to Oregon and Washington, uh, one of the first things that they mention is how beautiful uh, Oregon and Washington is and um, I, I couldn't agree more. Certainly, a unique uh, beauty and landscape um, in this part of the country. We we do have forest fires uh, every year, but nothing on the scale and magnitude of what we've seen. Uh, our governor has called this a once in a generation event, and uh, and I would definitely agree with that. So, um, but yeah, let me just. If, if you don't mind, I want to take a second. We've got 8,651 firefighters fighting fires. We've got uh, 572 fire engines out there. We've got 61 helicopters in the air trying to get control of these fires. Uh, many of these fires are still uncontained. So they're still burning and uh, uh, the focus is still on trying to protect life and property. Uh, so it, it's, it's something very unique in, in our lifetime. And you have had some loss of life and um, you, we've had folks in Oregon and in Washington too, I suppose, who've had to evacuate and, or be prepared to move, to go real quickly. Uh, as yes. Well. Uh, we, have a, we have a church uh, near Seattle uh, in Sumner, Washington. Uh, we have the Oregon Trail Free Will Baptist Church in Oregon City, which was the, uh, the end of the line for those on the Oregon Trail who came out. And, uh, and of course, the church here in Salem, Oregon, which we are about 50 miles south of Portland. And uh, all of our churches have had uh, some members who've had to evacuate their homes. Um, but no one's had any loss of property that we're aware of. And uh, even, and the good news is, is that right now, uh, some of the evacuation zones, um, we have three levels. Uh, one is, is get ready, get set, and the second one is get set, and then three is go. So uh, levels one, two, and three. So some of the level threes have been uh, reduced to level twos and some of the level twos have been reduced back to level one. So that's good news. Good. That's good. And Mike, we think me over usually on the East Coast and now in Nashville, Tennessee, we tend to think it's all the same, but boy, you're a long way from Terry and California is a big state and you you all are really struggling there as well, aren't you? Yeah, it's been uh, pretty amazing. Kind of just like Terry said, uh, this year is unprecedented. I think over the last five or six years, we, we've almost become used to having uh, a fire season that is enormous and, and has impacted a lot of people. But 
uh, already early on in this one. It surpassed any year on history. We've already had uh, over a million acres have burned. Uh, we've had uh, so many, I think we've, uh, last time I looked, you know, 35 people had died in these fires. Thousands of homes have been uh, affected and people displaced. So it's, uh, it's amazing. Again, uh, we could look back on, on our past experiences and, and uh, it, it's nothing like that at all. Uh, you know, for us here, we've had, I, I live in Fresno and, and there's a fire, the, the Creek fire, it's pretty close. It's enormous. And, you know, for probably the first 10, 12 days, there was no containment whatsoever. And so it was really threatening to a lot of the mountain communities. We have uh, students from California Christian College uh, that were affected. And uh, we've had uh, family members of, of church, uh, church members that were affected and displaced and uh, whole communities that were evacuated and you know, so it, it, it's been it's been amazing and sad uh, to see. Uh, but it's the, the thing about us is, you know, there's hundreds of fires all over the state and some pretty sizable. So I would mentioned earlier, uh, Dr. Moody, that one of the things that amazed me is I haven't seen blue sky in you know two or three weeks. <laughs> That's how uh, bad the smoke is. It's you know, it's like overcast. It's like a bad foggy day. And uh, so. Those are the more, I think those are the more pressing problems is, you know, we have horrible air quality and, mm -hmm. you know, people that are already uh, quarantined, somebody that might want to try to get outside and, and get some fresh air. <laughs> it just doesn't exist right now. Oh, yeah. And, and we didn't even get in or we haven't even mentioned the quarantine and all the complications of that. But uh, like you've tried to have outdoor services and it really, it's, it makes that difficult, doesn't it? It has. Yeah, we uh, so we had a lot, I, I think over the last month or so, we had a lot more churches that were developing an outdoor service approach. And uh, this has really affected that how to, you know, you, you've got individual churches, individual pastors making decisions on whether or not to have service if, you know, online only some are, you know, taking things indoors just to, to be able to exercise that, that option to worship and, and do it in cleaner air. And uh, it's, so it's, it's been a, it's been a struggle and a lot of hard decisions to be made. Mm -hmm. You know, um, if I can interject, mm -hmm. um, we had to cancel our church services this past Sunday morning. I talk about the smoke. Uh, that was the reason why the, the, uh, the smoke, the air was so bad. Um, it was very difficult to see. So it was unsafe for our folks to get out and even drive in it. And, and people were asked to stay indoors. But even um, at church, we were leaving our doors open, you know, our front doors, our inside doors. Uh, the weather was pleasant, uh, temperature wise. But uh, even if we were able to keep the doors closed and turn on the, um, you know, the systems, uh, the buildings would fill with a smoky, a smoky haze. So it was it was not feasible to even try to have a service and uh, turn on any kind of ventilation system um, because of the smoke. Yeah. And we we should tell our listeners we talked a little bit before we got on, and even now you smell like smoke, you know, from being out and and, uh, and being in it and so forth. Yes. Yeah. It gets on your clothes, uh, obviously, and uh, in your hair, those who have hair. <laughs> and uh, uh, not like me and Mike, but, uh, yeah. but we've got that. Yeah, he's got <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it does. Uh, it, it, every time you open the door. Um, so, yeah, uh, those who have breathing issues mm -hmm. uh, definitely are having a hard time. Uh, and even those of us who are fairly uh, healthy, um, you know, with our breathing, we have to clear our throat a lot. Uh, oh, a number yeah. of our people sound rather raspy. Uh, mm -hmm. And I, I've been dealing with some of that myself this morning. <laughs> well, we've got folks all over the country, we hope listening, and what can they do to support? Uh, how can they, how can they help? You know, I'm over in um, North Carolina or you know, Alabama, they are thinking, I wish we could give you some of the rain that we're dealing with with this hurricane and so forth. And it, it, it is kind of frustrating when you think about the different problems in the country 
what can folks do to support you all right now? Well, I, for me, I, one of the things that has impressed me again, so many people being displaced and certainly uh, all the people working the fires there, there are, there's already a movement of churches to provide space. Uh, you know, people in Alabama, they can't help us with space, but um, you know, we, we're trying to uh, collect things to help out, whether it be gift cards for groceries or, um, you know, there, there's going to be a need for rebuilding. Uh, I, I was going to mention there are several uh, Christian camps, not necessarily our Christian camp, the barrier, but several Christian camps that have been threatened and impacted and a couple have actually been lost. And so, uh, you know, any type of uh, support, definitely prayer uh, for the safety of, of the folks that are working and, and impact that are in the path of these fires. Uh, but there's organizations that are on the ground and, and able to help out and providing food and water and shelter. And uh, there's a, a lot, tremendous amount of animals uh, that have been affected. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of people uh, involved in that rescue effort. And, and so uh, there's been businesses and churches and people that have been providing feed and, and, and uh, whatever other supplies that, that are needed for that. So uh, just being able to help with that, I think is tremendous. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, and, and you know, um, I, I'd like to say that uh, we truly have been affected on a multi-level layer, if you will. Um, we, we've been affected uh, as a community. Uh, it is great to see people come together, neighbor helping neighbor. Uh, some families, uh, there's been great disruption of families. Families have been separated. Uh, there's been loss of life, as Mike had mentioned. Uh, people are, are grieving. Um, I mentioned uh, on one of my Facebook uh, posts that I personally uh, have felt the grief and the loss of some of the beauty and of the places that uh, my wife and my family have enjoyed since we've been here in Oregon. Um, there's a number of these kinds of things. People are obviously affected physically. Uh, our, our air has been the worst in the world, as uh, have you've seen on the news lately. Uh, but people are also suffering uh, mentally. Uh, there's an increase in depression and anxiety and other uh, challenges in that area. Uh, politically, they're, they're getting now to argue over uh, whose fault this is and uh, forest management and these kinds of things. Obviously, spiritually, uh, our folks have been affected. What is God saying to us? Uh, what's the meaning? What's the, uh, what's the message behind what we are experiencing out here in, uh, in the West Coast? But, um, but as we uh, think about these things, uh, obviously, we uh, have more practical things to think about. Um, one particular denomination, uh, they're one of their churches here in Salem, um, they received a, a truckload from their disaster relief program, uh, a truckload of uh, brooms and cleaning supplies, of rakes and wheelbarrows to, mm -hmm. to distribute freely to people who will, who will need them. Um, we noticed that they're asking for volunteers over at the fairgrounds, which is a staging area for evacuees to bring their animals. Uh, we need people to take care of the animals and so forth. So there's uh, some of these, these kinds of needs. Uh, our church in particular has had a, a clothing giveaway ministry for a number of years, and uh, we're currently working on uh, what we should do as a church, whether we should um, actually open up here at the church or, or donate these clothes to perhaps the Salvation Army or other organization. So uh, people can be praying about these kinds of things for us over here as, as we try to figure out what's going on. Obviously, uh, we, we need people uh, across the country to pray for a great awakening spiritually uh, in Washington, Oregon, and I'm sure California. Uh, we need to pray for the salvation of the lost uh, and for those who have been evacuated. Uh, we we want to pray. Uh, they've been uprooted. They have no homes to return to, trying to figure out what to do from there. So and so I would say to the folks back east, um, 
we are definitely affected in, in many ways. Continue to pray for us out here. It's good. Well, we're, we will definitely encourage folks to do that. And if it's all right with you two on our, when we post this, we'll include your email addresses. So yes. people could make contact with you if, if they're able to do things like some gift cards or, you know, maybe even send some, some funds or do some other things like that. They can make contact and just, Hey, you can tell them, you know, here, this is what we're able to do. And, uh, maybe they can communicate with you. And I also encourage our folks to think, you know, this is an opportunity. It's a difficult time for our churches on the West Coast, but uh, I can tell they're already being salt and light in the situation they're in. And so I encourage if you're, you've got a job that might take you to the West Coast, look at some of our churches, look at where they're at. Maybe you could you know, relocate in that area and you could support if you're a minister, uh, you're, you've been called into the ministry. Uh, may, it's a beautiful place. Uh, you think about what's out there, Washington, Oregon, California, uh, contact these men. And uh, uh, I know we've got some churches that have been looking for folks to come their way. So also pray that uh, we'll see some leaders step up and and uh, answer that call. Amen. Why don't we kind of end with, um, I just feel like we ought to read Psalm 46 and uh, it's good for us and it's good for, yes. our, good for our people too. It says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear though the earth be removed and though the mountains be moved into the midst of the sea. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The, earth, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord, what desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen, I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Hey, let's have a prayer before we sign off today. Thank you. Father, I thank you for Mike and for Terry, and I thank you for our good churches out on the West Coast. And I thank you, Lord, for our people and for all of the believers that are there. And I ask right now, Lord, that you will help them, that you will give them strength, Lord, uh, give them comfort in uh, what they're experiencing, what they've gone through. And Lord, I ask that you'll just help them uh, to know that you are there with them. You're walking beside of them and you're helping them every step of the way. Lord, please help everyone uh, out there on the West Coast, especially those who've lost loved ones. We've heard so many uh, sad stories about the loss of life. Be with those families. Give them strength and give them comfort. And Lord, help them to find you if they don't know you as Lord and Savior and help our people to be able to minister to them. Lord, we also ask uh, that you'll help those who've lost their homes and, uh, and belongings. And Lord, uh, even the beauty we think of what is out there in Oregon, California, and Washington, uh, that which has been lost. Give them comfort, Lord, and help us, Lord, to know that you're getting us through these particular situations. We ask as well that you'll send folks, Lord, and that you'll raise up people that will lead and that will uh, minister in our churches and minister through the communities in that area. And may we see the name of Christ lifted up and glorified. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray and we ask these things. Amen.
Thank you all for joining us today. I know you all are, are pretty busy uh, with everything you've got going out there on the West Coast. Just know that we're praying for you and we ask that God will be with you and will bless you.